That'll be fun. <coughs> we'll see how this works. You let me know if this doesn't work for you. Pat Coleman for D3Hoops.com, and I'm here with Dave Arsenault Jr., the uh, assistant coach who's running the show, at least for the most part right now, for Grinnell under his dad and his uh, team in the conference championship at the Midwest Conference as they defeated Grinnell 122-115. Um, you know, first of all, congratulations getting back to the title game. You guys have uh, gotten to the conference tournament, I guess, 12 times in the last 14 years. Um, haven't been to the title game since 11 and haven't won the conference tournament title since 2001. Yeah, um, you know, it's, it's certainly nice to get into postseason play, mm -hmm. um, especially with the number of teams in our league and only four making the postseason. Yeah. At the same time, it's, it's also nice to get to the, the, get to the title game. Like, and we have struggled in the past um, for different reasons. Some of it's been injuries, some of it's just been inconsistent play. Some of it has been when, a, when another team has a week to prepare for us, they can sure. oftentimes you know, figure out exactly what they want to do against our pressure and how to slow us down. So, but it, it is certainly nice to get back to the title game. And I would say in most cases, I'm sure, although not, I know you don't play a full double round robin in this conference, but for the most part, when you're getting to this game, you're going to see someone who's played you twice already. Right, and that, and that was the case tonight with Rippon. They had, they had played us twice already in the season, but we split with them, uh, each winning in our home gym, and, and tonight uh, we knew that they were going to be a, a, a load to handle. Uh, you guys came out really hot, uh, 10 of your first 12 from downtown. Uh, obviously not possible to maintain that pace, but uh, comfortably going into the half and then Rippon kind of came out and did some things differently in the second half. Yeah, right off the bat, you know, it, it worked out the way that you draw it up on the clipboard. You know, we were getting open looks from our shooters and they were making them. Yeah. And it allowed us to get into our press and, and I think it, it allowed us to just keep the momentum going. Uh, of course, Rippon is a great team and, and we struggled all night with really forcing them to turn the ball over. They have three really good guards and then they, they actually yeah. spread us out in the second half and, and, and made a lot of threes. It turned into a three for three game there for a while, but uh, hats off to them for a great season and a, and a, and a younger team that I know is going to be back here in the future. I don't remember the specifics of the formula, but I'm pretty sure that 11 turnovers is not how you want uh, your opponents going for a day. Certainly not, especially not since we had 10 at the half. Mm -hmm. Like, and we were looking to, to try to increase the number. The fact that they only turned the ball over one time in the second half is, is it's some on us, but it's a, it's a lot of just a tribute to their guards and how they can handle our pressure. Um, you know, obviously there's a lot of focus on you guys uh, around setting records. Uh, a lot of that stuff happens in November and December, so a lot of it's a long time ago. But how do you how do you feel? You know, at this point in the season, looking back on it, you guys you know took a lot of flack for some of the things that happened. How do you feel about it at this point? You know, um, we we try to do Dad and I try to do what's best for our team, and and right off right off the bat, like what we try to do early on is this, in the season is get our best players playing at their highest level. Mm -hmm. And one way to do that is to uh, try just try to set them up for for a game to get their confidence up, and then everything kind of falls into place. You know, early in the season we saw a, a lot of man to man. You know, yeah. and, and then. Um, teams gradually shifted over into zone and that's what we've seen exclusively for the second half of the season and in large part that is because what Jack Taylor can do off the dribble like yeah. and I know tonight he had a little bit of a rough night but they did a really good job of keying in on him and, and we, it just allowed some other people who are pretty good spot up shooters to, to get some open looks. Yeah, so I mean, so Taylor, who had 1,375 points in whatever game that was, uh, had 11 tonight. Maru who had was it 37 assists? Did I get remember that correctly? Broke, broke my record. Yeah, in a game had you know 10. That's certainly a reasonable number. But uh, you know, those aren't the things that you're going to be able to do in conference tournament games, obviously. Right. Yeah, and you know what? The the conference tournament team, a team like Griffin, they came in with a game plan to try to limit Jack. You know, oftentimes he was seeing a man and a half in the zone, and they were really keyed on him. And and I thought he did a good job of. of Passing out of double teams, you know, showing that he's an, an unselfish player. That when he's double teamed, he's going to move the ball. And then at the same time, we have a lot of guys. Luke Yeager, Julian Mark stepped up and made some shots. Kyle Parker, a, a first year from Chicago, played his best game of the season by far. Yeah. And it came at a really crucial time. Tell us a little bit about the difference between you guys today versus the game at Ripon back in January. You lost 126-99. Uh, yeah. Um, well, part of it was it was our first game back from break, and we really try to emphasize taking time off and practice through the season so that we're ready for the end of the season. And, uh, you know, so we didn't practice for about two weeks there in December. Uh, it was, we were trying to get our legs back. Rippin just ran us out of the gym. They knocked down some three-point shots in that game. Uh, we didn't shoot near as well as what we did tonight, and they just kind of ran away with it. You know, and it was the same, similar problem where we had a tough time uh, making the guards turn the ball over and, and when we, when we don't force turnovers and get some easy looks, it can it, it can oftentimes be not very pretty. I want to 
help people understand. Uh, you know, the, the, I don't want to say, the, the people who don't see Grinnell play just who say, oh, they don't play any defense. And of course, that isn't true. So tell us how you guys play defense and then when, you know, you guys uh, go away from that to try to focus on getting the ball down. Yeah, so we're, we're just uh, looking to pressure the ball all 94 feet. And it starts out as a man-to-man -man press. Uh, with guys in certain areas just locking onto a man, then as soon as the ball comes into play, we just look to double team the ball. And uh, so the nearest two guys will trap it all the time. It, it, it leads to the other team not being able to run a set play once the entire game or till the very end of the game when we go a little bit more conservative. Um, and it's, it's in an effort just to force pace of play. A lot of times the other team and Rippin today got some layups, they got some uncontested three-point shots that were horse competition shots that they made. Yeah. And But it, it's all designed to get the pace of play up and down to try to use our depth, our 15 guys, to try to wear down their guys so that in the last 10 minutes of the, of the game, hopefully we have a little bit of an edge. It's David Arsenault Jr., uh, the uh, assistant coach who uh, is certainly uh, calling the shots on the sidelines here today as Grinnell defeated Rippin 122-115 in the Midwest Conference semifinals. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Good, yeah. to, good to see you. You too? Good to see you.